Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of day. It is Sunday, the fifth Sunday in Lent, the year of our Lord, 2023. Next Sunday begins Holy Week with Palm Sunday. We have Monday, Thursday, two services on Good Friday, the Great Vigil of Easter on Saturday evening, and then two services on Easter Sunday. And uh, you can go online and... Uh, you're not online now, but you can go to our, our uh, webpage, emmanuelri.org, and see the schedule of the services there in that place. Or you can call the church or look in the bulletin if you have one home or if you receive the image, if you're a member of Emmanuel, you'll see it there as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. We turn now to the reading assigned from the Daily Lectionary. And tonight we read from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark once again, chapter 14, beginning at verse 12, picking up where we left off last night. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? and he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me, they began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is the blood of my covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And that is the gospel of the Lord. So, of course, Jesus is rapidly approaching his crucifixion. We hear about Judas in this account, of course, they're going to celebrate the Passover. And he is the Passover lamb, and he is about to be slain. Uh, that's a title. Remember, John called him the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And that's really with Yom Kippur in view. But Paul will call him the Paschal Lamb. And Revelation calls him the Slaughter Lamb. I think looking at both, uh, both the Passover and Yom Kippur, where Jesus is both those things. He's the lamb who takes away our sin, and he's the lamb by whose blood 
death passes over us. We are covered in his blood. That's baptismal imagery, but also pointing forward to the Lord's Supper. We participate in that body and blood that rose again from the dead. So the Passover and the discussion with the disciples, the apostles, about who will betray him. And as we find out, you know, with, from Peter, we won't hear that tonight. We just hear the statement that Peter makes, and then the Lord say, you know, you're, you're all going to fall away from me. Uh, they all say the same thing Peter does. That's We're told that at the end, even though, you know, we all promise, oh, I'd rather die. It's easy, you know, sitting in my basement, uh, um, uh, nothing going on. It's quiet. I live in a quiet neighborhood. It's easy to say, I would rather die than fall away from me. Think about my brothers and sisters throughout the world who are being persecuted for the, place, for the faith, places like China, the Middle East, China, the Christian faith is not tolerated at all. And, uh, maybe we'll have a missionary come and speak sometime from China and hear about what they have to do to even get into the country and what risk they are at while they're there. And the Chinese people, you know, we can get those people out, hopefully, um, our missionaries, but what about the people who live there? Now, we do have records in, you know, in right now of torture happening. It happens for any number of reasons in China, uh, but... Uh, for proclaiming this Christian faith. <coughs> Pardon me. And so, you know, we're very comfortable. And as soon as that comfort is threatened, uh, we fold like a cheap deck of cards. I don't know how else to say it, but uh, uh, we, we, we don't want to confront our, our, our own misbeliefs and those around us, particularly people that we love. And you think about that. Is, you ask yourself this. When you don't, when you deny Christ, in whatever form that takes. That means denying what he's given us, uh, denying the truth of his word. Uh, is that loving or unloving? You know, we say, well, it's loving because we, you know, all roads lead to Rome. We don't say those words, but we justify it that way. Um, but when you let people live a lie, you know, or, or roll around in the lie, and which is really the kingdom of the father of lies, Satan, you're not helping them. And it might be difficult for you to confess Christ, but still, we're called to do so. But we deny him in our own way. Now, the nice thing is, the beautiful thing is, is that there's perfect absolution. And we'll hear about that in the days ahead as we uh, go through Mark still in, these daily in the daily lectionary, but also as we approach Good Friday, which is um, uh, not this coming week, but the following week. So... We hear in the midst of between Judas, the episode with Judas, um, and uh, Peter saying, I won't deny him. We hear about the institution of the Lord's Supper. Take eat, this is my body. And then this is my blood, the blood of the covenant. Uh, we say often in church, a testament, which is a covenant, a testament is ratified by the blood of Christ, by his death. Uh, you know, a will is put in force by the death of the, the testator, you know, the one who, who writes the testament. And then we receive the benefit of that testament, whatever it is. So, yes, it is a covenant. It's a legal contract, if you want to think of it that way, that Jesus says, okay, um, this is the blood. And elsewhere, he says, this is the new covenant. All right, so the Old Testament is done. Uh, all those sacrifices are put, an end, are put to an end this night because they are all fulfilled in the Lamb who was slain, Christ the Lord. And in that lamb who was slain, that, that slaying of the lamb, that shedding of his blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is complete. It is total. There is no sin he did not die for. That's the tragedy of Judas and often is the tragedy in our time. Uh, why does Jesus say it would have been better for that man if he had not been born? Because he knows what's going to happen to Judas. Judas, Judas is going to despair and take, take uh, his life his own life, by his own hand. Uh, Peter will despair for a while, but then we'll hear that perfect absolution of our Lord, the ladies, you know, he'll be outside the tomb, or he'll be outside the house where Jesus is being beaten, he'll weep. And uh, that'll be the last, the last interaction he has with the Lord, and the Lord looks at him and the, the rooster crows. Except for Easter morning, when he sends the ladies to Peter, and he says specifically, and this is also recorded in Mark, send, you know, go to Peter and the others and say, I will go before you. That's that absol absolution is offered. It was there for Judas too, uh, but Judas just didn't realize that was that Christ died for his sin as well. 
So he hangs himself. So in that sense, it would have been better if Judas had not been born. That torment of, of, you know, really denying the Lord and betraying God. And we do do that. Lent's a time to reflect on that. Lent, Lent's a time to reflect and repent of those weaknesses of ours, our human weaknesses, our fallen human weaknesses, where we have denied our Lord, even though we've stood before his altar and say, I promise that I will face death rather than turn from confessing your holy name and your holy work. I promise you know, that I will make diligent use of the means of grace, meaning I'll get my rear end into church. I don't know what happens. You know, so, and I'm not talking about the frailty of age when you become a shut in. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking to you know, people, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So, anyway, there is that perfect absolution that's done, accomplished in the death of Christ our Lord. And it's for you. We'll hear more about this in the days to come. All right, let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For now you let your servant go in peace, your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And before we say the Lord's Prayer, I'm going to recite the litany, which again is found on page 288 and 89 in our hymnal. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and the assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help us, good Lord, in all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet and to send faithful laborers into your harvest and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our presidents and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all, we implore you to hear us, good Lord to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. 
Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll sing a bit of hymn 621, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence. Let all mortal flesh keep silence, and with fear and trembling stand, under nothing earthly he minded, for with blessing in his hand. Christ our God to earth descending, comes our homage to demand. King of kings, yet born of Mary, as of old on earth he stood, Lord of lords in human vesture, in the body and the blood, he will give to all the faithful his own self for heavenly food. That stands as one and two of four of him 621. Let all mortal flesh keep silence. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed evening. And by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.